Welcome everyone. I'm here with Jerry Fifield, one of our speakers for the upcoming Sediment and Erosion Control for Construction Sites Masterclass Series. Thanks for joining me, Jerry. So tell our audience a little about why they should sign up for this upcoming series. Well, it goes back to being educated about the whole discipline of sediment and erosion control. If you're talking about trying to remove sediment out of runoff waters, what are the BMPs, best management practices, that might have a chance to remove a fair amount of sediment or are all, often all of the items that you see on a, a plan uh, items that indeed you know, need to be uh, reevaluated and maybe not even implemented because of the fact that we're overlooking something that should be done upstream on a project. So basically, this whole class, this whole series is going to look at the overall designing of plans and what are some of the BMPs, or a fair number of the BMPs that we can use, which are more effective, and what are the limitations. Yeah. Great. We'll be covering a lot of practical information. So what specifically will attendees take away from this series? A much better understanding of what's involved to evaluate a site to develop a plan that can be implemented by the contractor. And I must emphasize, probably of all the, the people that we are developing plans for, we should always keep in mind the contractor is the most important person. Not the regulatory person, not even yourselves as a designer. The contractor has to take and be able to implement. So we talk a lot about effectiveness of the BMPs being used and the limitations of when they are installed and whether or not they're effective to really try to knock down the, the sediment that's generated by rainfall events as well as snow melt, by the way. And probably the biggest thing out of it is the practicality and and also to be able to have the tools for designers and reviewers so that if they ever had to testify in a court about a particular uh, practice being used or, or a set of drawings that were implemented by a contractor, they would be able to defend themselves with good logical, mathematical, physical, and engin engineering tools that they have in their backgrounds and defend it in a way that would be accountable for what they presented to the clients or to the, in, the contractor to install. So they're not just walking away with concepts, but with practical tools. And Jerry, tell us what makes this series unique. Being able to say that you've had a series of classes that require you to be accountable for what you're recommending to be implemented on a construction site. That's probably the most uniqueness out of there that I can think. Although uh, one of the big things that, we're, that we take pride in is the fact that the individuals will learn about how to make practical plans. And more importantly, we do go through, and this is really the biggest uniqueness, I think, of our program, where we will take a plan and evaluate what would be performance goals for that particular area and then after implementing the best management practices throughout the series of construction phases we'll determine how effective that plan is before you actually implement it on the construction site itself. So in other words you get a good handle on whether or not the plan is going to be practical to use and whether or not it's going to take care and reduce the sediment loading that often occurs on a construction site without any type of good planning. And, and the plans themselves can be evaluated to see how well you may or may not be able to achieve your, your goal of trying to keep a certain amount of sediment generated, keep it on the site rather than discharge it off the site. Practicality is important. At the end of last year, we ran a similar series with you and Tina that focused on roadways. How is this construction series different from the roadways series? The biggest difference on this one is this series is going to be more tailored toward the subdivisions, large building, construction sites, as the roadway series was specifically identified associated with highway uh, development or roadway development. 
the BMPs that we use on both are essentially the same. For example, a silt fence. Is a silt fence no matter where you put it in? How well do you install it? Where you install it? A highway project, you don't have to worry about uh, any of the excavation materials or any of the roadway project itself uh, having materials going to, a, say, an adjacent stream. Well, on a on a construction site of a subdivision, you don't necessarily have streams in there, although back east that may be a possibility, but out west it's not nearly as much of a possibility. But we have to make sure that we install the BMPs in a manner that doesn't impact other uh, developments within the subdivision itself, because often you have different builders that are building, so they have to try to make sure that they keep any sediment that's generated on their sites within their sites themselves. So that's the biggest difference, I think, between the two, is what happens when you're building a road, what's happening when you're building a subdivision, or a large, um, what we call big box, say a commercial building, office building, and so forth. Good to know. Thanks for clearing that up. Now this series comes with a manual. Tell us about the manual and how we'll be using it with these sessions. The manual is actually the, the guide to, to um, develop these plans and to provide accountability. So we go through and beginning right from the very beginning of an intro where you end up having information about the revised universal soil loss equation and how you can apply them onto a uh, series of modeling all the way through the performance goals themselves. So each chapter will be utilized and provide information, equations, going to be providing the tables that, it, that you need to evaluate the, uh, the, the problem that's at hand that we're discussing and so forth. So it's going to be quite a uh, well, it's a, it's a reviewer, designer, and reviewer manual that covers an awful lot of material that you're not going to find in, a, in the traditional sediment erosion control manuals that are provided by the states or municipalities. Great. So we'll be walking through the manual, but we also have three workshops. Tell us a little about these. Those, those workshops are designed to answer a problem that we'll be giving after every two sessions so that we can go through and, and have you do what I would almost classify as being a homework assignment to go through and see if indeed uh, you're attacking these the best way possible using the information we presented through our series. Uh, hey, where am I? <laughs> presented uh, through our webinar series, as well as maybe your own review of the manual themselves. So we go through, we, we answer those questions, and also answer any other questions that people may have about the other uh, materials that have been presented throughout the, uh, actually the whole series themselves. And so if you have any questions like, say, an erosion, or erosion control, the modeling, and so forth. Thanks, Jerry. That's all we have time for right now. If you want to hear more from Jerry and Tina, check out our other videos on our Forest UU YouTube channel and our Sediment and Erosion Control for Construction Sites Masterclass series available online at foresteruniversity.net. Sign up now and save 20% on the full series.